and a three and a two and a one. That's the start of the Noise Cancelling Podcast. I'm not going to talk about noise this time. I'm going to kick straight into it because we've got a lot to talk about. It's the Noise Cancelling Podcast. It's brought to you by the people from Tech Radar, Laptop Mag, Tom's Guide, and many more from the fine folks at Future Publishing. Let's see who's on the pod this week. Let's start with, as ever, Cherie. Hey there, I'm Cherie L. Smith, Editor-in-Chief of Laptop Mag. And then we've got Matt. Hey, I'm Matt. I am Tech Radar's video producer. I like when I say Matt, it's, it's always like a magical mystery tour, which one it's going to be. There are too many of us. There are far too many of us. A magical mystery tour. And Tom, am I saying welcome to the podcast? I feel like you haven't been on before. You are saying welcome. Hi, yes. I'm Tom. I'm the staff writer for the phones team for Tech Radar. What's your last name, Tom? Oh, Bedford. Okay. <laughs> Pop quiz. I had to think about that one for a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> God, the questions are getting really hard here. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know how you're going to react to the big question then, Tom. So if, as, uh, as Tom is a, a new entrant on the podcast this week, um, we always start off with a big question, which is, you know, the big thing that's been happening this week turned into a very funny question where we can all really spread our wings and give absolutely nonsense answers that often involve wearables that turn to spiders. That's, that's Cherie loves that. <laughs> um, but this week, um, as you'll see in the podcast, there's been loads happening. We've had Xbox, we've had the, the hangover from PS5, there's been exclusives, there's been so many things happening, and it's just been quite frustrating to try and build it all in. So in lieu of that, um, to get it out of your system, to get this anger and this annoyance out of the way, uh, what piece of tech would you like to kick really effing hard and don't be obvious? So Cherie, what would you like to kick and why? Um, at this point, it would be the iPhone 12 because theoretically it is going to be it is going to launch during Prime Day and I, I hate them for it. I hate it. I would like to give it office space treatment. So, you know, in, in terms of the, uh, this is all theoretical right now. Uh, we've heard leaks that the iPhone will be on the 13th. We've seen a leaked story that the Prime Day may be the same day. None of this is obviously confirmed right now. We're hopeful that it's not because that would be lovely. Um, but yeah, the iPhone 12 would not be a welcome addition if, if the two were coincided, right? Yeah, no. I, I like if, if that happens, I would I would hit it with a bat, I would kick it, I would stomp it, and then I would set it on fire. But Tom, you you you're a phones writer, you know uh, these things are quite robust, right? They that might not even hurt it. Yeah, but th- if you kick it enough it will break. That that is a promise from Tom, the phones writer for today. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's what I live my life by. If you kick it enough, it will break, yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, what, what would you kick and why? I thought long and hard about this, and I think it would be smart glasses because, you know, they're all small, they're precious, they're really delicate, and if you just stomped on that thing, it would explode into a million pieces. I think that would be glorious. I did have a second one because I couldn't decide, and the other one would be if you've got a proper fancy camera, tens of thousands of pounds or dollars with all the bells and whistles, and just kicks that too. Like, to see all that money explode, that's the most important expensive tech thing i could think to kick when you said the smart glasses i imagine it kind of like karate style where they sort of like line them all up in like vices and you can just kick like six in a row and just kick through all of them like google glass apple's ar glasses some oakley shit (laughs) that'd be quite satisfying i I was thinking more football style so they they throw them at you and you have to try and kick as many as you can while running about a small pitch that'd be good that that famous old thing that we all do (laughs) (laughs) Uh, matt what about you uh, mine's kind of boring now, I guess. I'm I'm gonna say, internet servers. It's 2020, that is and still it is boring. It is, and still websites are going down left, right, and center. Trying to pre-order my PS5, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Oh but my trying god! Trying to pre-order my PS5, and the websites are crashing. It's 2020. Turn them on and on off again. Just get it working. I don't so understand. The, the one thing to solve your frustration is not to kick the shit out of one of them. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. That's how we got in this problem in the first place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, someone else was annoyed about something else, and they're like, I'm just going to kick a web server, off we go. Also, I, re- I feel really bad for the listeners that they can't see the video, but Matt and Cherie look like they're wearing the same top. Oh, yeah. identically. <laughs> Twinsies! <laughs> but, like, it's, it, it's, got, it's lovely navy with spots on, and the cut, the way that Matt's wearing it, looks like he's wearing exactly the same as Cherie. Um, does my look you, sleeveless as well? It does, yeah, a little bit. It's just my, my gun's poking out. Um, as I said, this this is a this is a much more on the fly episode of, of the noise cancelling podcast. I can't remember what episode number it is, um, so I haven't prepared this question. I thought, you know, I'm going to answer it off the thing straight away. I thought out what I want to kick, and I saw the grill of the Xbox One X, 
So apparently that's what I want to kick. I don't know if it would shatter enough. Maybe like get a like a plexiglass version or not even that, like something really fragile version of it made just so I could just properly boot it and it could shatter into a thousand pieces. I don't know what, I'm not even that annoyed at the Xbox, but apparently subconsciously it's the thing that I hate the most. So there you go. Uh, right, let's talk about what's happening this week because there is a lot. So uh, Matt and I have just come off an event to talk from Samsung, the Samsung Impact event. It was for the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. Uh, Tom, you've touched this which is difficult in the COVID times, and you were obviously very safe, thankfully. Um, how good was it as the phone? Yeah, they let me touch and not kick it, unfortunately, so I can't speak on that front. <laughs> but it does seem... <laughs> Did you try to kick it? Uh, no, no. Well, I, I, you don't there know were a lot of There were a lot of COVID enforcers around me. I didn't think kicking it would be like the best idea. But they can't get close enough to you to stop you, so, you know. They could catch it, though, which would ruin the whole point of it. <laughs> So, yeah, your original question was about not picking the phone. It was about using the phone, wasn't it? Um, so I, I found the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition quite hard to pronounce when I just said it there. Um, that's a lot of words. They've shortened it down to FE. Um, it is quite an interesting one because it's as much a Samsung Galaxy A phone as it is an S phone. The A phones are their cheaper ones and uh, well, they're designed for people that want some of the cool features without the high price. And I found it quite hard to justify why this was an S phone, not an A phone, because it is a bit cheaper and it has got the same things that the Samsung Galaxy A phones have, like uh, OK cameras, like a good screen. The key thing here, I think, was the looks of it, because I watched you guys stream and I know you are discussing the colours and it has six different beautiful designs. And that was the thing that caught my eye and I think a lot of people will be interested in too. Did you see the colours? Yeah, why are they all called Cloud? It was cloud red, cloud orange, cloud lavender, cloud white, cloud navy, and cloud mint. I just remembered them off the top of my head. Well done, me. That was really impressive. That was yeah. really impressive that you got them all off the top of your head. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've no idea. Uh, every Samsung phone this year, they've tried to do something interesting with the colours. Like for the Note phones, they tried to push, what was it, Mystic Bronze? Yeah, but that was just one Mystic. Yeah, um, okay. Better example for the S20s at the beginning of the year or about five years ago. I can't remember when February was. <laughs> they all were some kind of pale. They all had something in common. I think Samsung is trying to do something with its colours this year, although for life of me, I don't know what. So spec-wise, this it seemed to have a lot of the same, a lot of similar specs. So we had 120 hertz refreshy scrolly screen, which Samsung made a big deal of. Obviously the colours, there's the uh punch hole camera the same samsung a snapdragon 865 processor lots of, lots of similarities within it and the thing that got me was i i agree with you that why is this not an a series apart from obviously the processor is a bit higher red higher power it's the samsung galaxy s20 fe compared to the iphone se i'm like there is not you know it's a cut down version of a flagship with a something e after i mean like samsung's barely hiding this right yeah, in my first draft of my review that I did, uh, I noticed that I kept calling it the Samsung Galaxy S20 SE instead of the FE and had to go through quickly editing it to make sure it's correct. This does seem like what they're doing, especially with some of the other things that Apple does with its cheaper phones, like giving it bolder colours, you know, how the, was it the iPhone XR had the bright red one, and that's the one I remember most. Uh, it feels like they are trying to look and see what Apple has done with its cheaper phones to make it the fe more interesting yeah sharia are you are you gonna ever buy one of these phones i know you're a samsung fan through the note range yeah no i'm gonna get a note yeah i don't know what, i don't even know why i asked the question <laughs> no! it was a no, stupid no, no, question no. well i know <laughs> i got caught not. i got caught i got caught in presenter mode trying to segue across to you easily and i thought i've just asked a stupid question would you <laughs> would you ever buy what? five of these instead you know just to be like proper baller that's a sharia question <laughs> I mean, no. And then kick, and then kick them all, kick them all off a bridge. <laughs> no, I don't have Film beef it. with Samsung right now. I have beef with Apple right now. <laughs> in terms, well, in terms of beef, the I think all of us have had issues with whether it's a web server, whether it's with Microsoft, whether it's with Sony. Everyone's got really excited about new consoles. The Sony PlayStation Five, the Xbox One X, the Xbox One S. No, oh, no, 
No. So what Gareth is trying to say is that we're having beef with uh, big box retailers and uh, Microsoft and Sony, in particular the PlayStation 5, the digital edition, the standard edition, the Xbox Series X, and the Xbox Series S. Uh, we have all tried to pre-order them. Uh, some of us were successful. Some, A lot more of us were not. And quite frankly, I'm upset about it. Like, there's no reason that in this day and age, it, like, like, yes, yes, we are in the in the darkest timeline, but in the year of our Lord 2020, there is no reason that if I click on a button to pre-order something, I'm getting error messages or I'm getting Best Buy. <laughs> you and I have beef that is Kobe, the finest of beef. Um <laughs> A1 Kobe beef. Not Wagyu, not Choice Cuts, not Angus. Kobe A1. Too many times I clicked on that button and it looked like I had the um Series X in my cart and then I would I would go to checkout and get ready my get my payment information ready and it'd be like your cart is empty, try again. We had a, we had a similar issue with very.co.uk in the UK where they where they everything seemed like it was in stock and then you'd go to pick like your specific option of what you wanted they were all just grayed out um so that was fun every retailer has its own quirks i, I appreciate it's difficult you know for something of this magnitude because you, you know we haven't had console launches every year i don't think anything hits this level of pre-order but you're right it's if, i understand if it's just a case of you get there and it's sold out fine but that kind of that middle ground of like i've got it i haven't got it i've got it i haven't got it it's just it's it's just unbelievable also, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, sir, you literally, like, this is not your first rodeo with uh, massive amounts of people uh, stampeding to your site. How in the world am I just getting nothing but pictures of adorable doggos when I'm trying to buy, uh, um, trying to pre-order a system? How? How is this possible? What happened to AWS? What happened to your cloud? What happened to all this stuff that you've put in place so this doesn't happen? How is it that we are here and like, uh, uh, like okay, so our people, so what are we going to do with uh, Prime Day when it when it rolls along? Like, how 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 are we supposed to? But that, if you can't different. deal with this, no, 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 it is because there's there's no. No, when you're not going to get the same amount of people going for like. Uh, you know, a, a Fire TV or, you know, the latest TV or something or a laptop. There's not going to be that level of people where people have been gearing up for months, years, in fact, to get this. And Amazon, you know, well-known people going for that. I just can't think, I, I'm not being apologist for these brands. I think it's crazy. But the the fact is, I don't think, I can't think of a single situation where there's been this level of hype for a single product that people try to buy it on a single moment Listen in the last here. five years. <laughs> These folks just, that man is worth a billion dollars. Billion would it be? You better fix that website. <laughs> I think in, in Cherie's head, Bezos is on like a, a exercise bike in the server room, powering all the servers himself. He, he For a billion dollars, he better, he, he better be. <laughs> like... Yeah, I, I, it'd be one of those stories I'd like to hear behind the scenes of properly because oh yeah, the, it, it, I'd, I'd understand kind of, again, I feel like I'm being an apologist. I'm not. I just like to figure out this mystery because it wasn't just Amazon. It wasn't just Best Buy. It wasn't just Walmart. It wasn't, it, it, was, it was everyone just constantly just flashing in and out, which makes me feel like this was just properly unprecedented, in which case, mm. not great. But, and then for it to happen again, you know, PS5 started, that was a problem. And then Xbox Series X just as bad. So there's, some, there's something going on here that the retailers, if you spoke to somebody who was there on the ground, they'd be like, please, it's not our fault, I promise. Yeah, And I'd sure. say lies, <laughs> filthy, filthy lies. Uh, but seriously, this is a, like, we saw this with NVIDIA um, with the 3080s and like, you like, don't sit there and hype things up for a year or more in advance knowing that people are going to want this thing and not give people the means to buy it. It's frustrating. Like, so I, I, I just don't understand with all this preparation. How, like, and I would expect Microsoft site. Like, if I go to the Microsoft store, I would expect you to have everything in place. You know who had the best um system for this? GameStop. GameStop did a virtual queue. 
So basically what you would do is you would go onto the GameStop page, search whatever console you're trying to pre-order, and they would put you in a digital queue. And it says specifically, do not refresh, do not touch. And when we, like, when it's your turn, the site went live and you could shop as you wanted to or needed to. They did the best system. Like, and at, 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 at least when I got there, when something was out of stock, it's specific, it said with unequivocal, just out of stock. It was grayed out. I couldn't do anything. Best Buy didn't even go, or didn't go, even go online the same time as everyone else. They went on an hour afterwards. What the? <laughs> I wondered, I, I saw that. I wondered about whether there were people who were doing it specifically because they knew there'd be a clamor and it's better to be in a free window because some people went the next day you know just to try and maybe mop some things up i i don't know it, it is it is strange and we had a queuing system over here in the uk with a brand called curries that worked pretty well as well even though you got in your forty five thousandth in the queue i thought do they have forty five thousand ps5s of, of xbox series x's to to dole out but either way i agree a queuing system is better even though it's massively frustrating when it crashes and you're like oh man I think it didn't help, right, that Sony came out a couple of months ago and said, don't worry, we will let you know when pre-orders yeah. are going live. We will give you time to deal with this. And then they did their launch event and some retailers went live straight away and some retailers went live in a couple of hours. And it, well, for us in the it UK, it was like 2 a.m. some went live. It wasn't straight away. It was, it was, there was a few seconds between the finishing of the breath and it going exactly. live. So there was, it did actually tell the truth. So... <laughs> But let's yeah, exactly. let's find out. We'll, we'll reconvene in November and find out who actually gets those because that's also the bigger question: of will they actually turn up? It's curious we got to the point where the next gen gaming company that hasn't had the technical network connection issues is Google Stadia of all people. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants that. That's not next gen. You can't put a next gen <laughs> sticker on that. It's all gen. We managed to get all of our pre-orders, so we got the PS5, we got the um, Series X, and we got the Series S. If my pre-orders do not come through, there will be hell to pay. I will find each of these CEOs. I have a certain <laughs> set of skills, and I will find them. It sounds like you're good at LinkedIn when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> also, Microsoft, remember when you said that it wasn't going to be a pro the naming convention wasn't confusing? Yeah, I, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm proof my, of that. I, I, call, I called it. So a lot of people bought the One X thinking it was the Series X. And I, I'm, I'm so sorry for y'all. We think, you know, I, you know, it could just be that people were saddened about any kind of Xbox. We don't know that. Yeah, that very seriously. Sales were up 740%. People, people were enjoy. making mistakes. They wanted an Xbox. That's all it was. Let's when they there. first announced the Series X... About nine months ago, I made a video on Tech Radar, went up on YouTube, and I got slated in the comments saying this exact thing. People are going to be confused. People are going to buy the wrong thing. I got destroyed in the comments. Don't want to say I told you so, but go find that video and give me the praise I deserve. I am all about I told you so. I have dances <laughs> for it and everything. No, I'm all about that. I And I feel bad for kids who, really, again, who wanted a Series X who may be getting a 1X or a Series S instead. I apologize to you, kiddies. No, I feel sorry for the parents. This is what I keep saying. Like, the kids the kids will make do. You know, you've got the, you know, this backwards compatibility. That's fine. They won't know any different unless they get another one from <laughs> having previously had the original version. But as a parent, we talked about this before, there's no parent out there that goes, ah, you got the wrong console. I got it wrong. Sucks to be you. <laughs> they will, they'll genuinely be distraught because they thought, you know, I've saved up. I'm spending, you know, we haven't got a lot of money right now. And they get the wrong console. That's the people that the real sadness comes from. Well, no, yes, you know, I, I you, you didn't get your that. kid the right present. And I think that's. I hope that this gets rectified and people realise before time. You know, it doesn't land before Christmas, so they got time to sort it out. Anyway, I think before Cherie combusts, we should talk about something that Tom loves, which is exclusives on Tech Radar, specifically around OnePlus phones. Tom, yeah, Tech Radar exclusively broke the news about the OnePlus Eight T's display spec so it's going to have an 8.55 inch display 120 hertz screen uh, a max brightness of 1100 nits which is pretty big for or pretty bright for a smartphone and also a 2.5k display what do you think about these specs um yeah no i mean these specs are looking bang on to what i was hoping this would be right like i think you know oneplus is one of those brands that kind of just keep impressing and and keep worming their way more and more into the mainstream but yeah the, the 120 hertz fluid display seems like if you want to make a phone that's going to break into the mainstream at this point 
that's what you've got to be going for. Um, and I think that'll be the big pull for a lot of people. Samsung Galaxy SE has already got the uh, the 120 hertz display. Samsung Galaxy FE. I'm being I'm being facetious, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tom, contextualize this though, because OnePlus, you know. Matt says that they, I don't know if he was making a joke or not, but OnePlus is, seems to be coming out with new things every week. Like we've just had the 8, I'm sure. And now we've got the 8T being released. Well, we on? had the 8 about six months ago, but obviously no, time is a little bit non-fluid week. right now. Um, this, this is quite curious though, because usually the T series is a little bit specced up from the normal numbered series, but not a huge revolution. But uh the OnePlus 8T screen specs show that it's actually going to be smaller than the OnePlus 8 because that had a 6.78 inch display, I believe. But it is still going to have a higher refresh rate, a higher resolution and a max brightness that's way higher. So it's really interesting to see what OnePlus is trying to do with this. And it kind of lines up with rumors we've heard there's not going to be a pro model. Mm. So this does kind of point towards maybe OnePlus shaking things up with its T-series a little bit. Maybe it's going to put one phone out that's kind of a mix of the normal and the pro from before. Um, I think things are a little bit messy with the company right now because they put out the Nord, which they haven't had one of before. So their whole convention is uh, thrown out the window a little bit. But we just talked about the SE and the FE and the Nord fits squarely into that bracket of these mid-tier phones of that people could you know, aspire to in inverted commas? Uh, I think it doesn't because the Nord actually succeeds at being a cheap phone with good specs, whereas the iPhone SE and the Galaxy S20 FE are purporting to do that, but actually are quite expensive for what they are. The Nord is one of like quite a new category, I think, of kind of really cheap phones that managed to hit that. I'd also put um, one of Oppo's phones and a Motorola phone in there as well. Um, but that has kind of ruined everything else for OnePlus a little bit. I, I'll just see a tweet. This is live information. Um, Dieter Bond from The Verge uh, has just tweeted saying that Samsung tells me the S20 FE wasn't in its plans when it launched the S20 back in March, uh, which was the last big in-person tech event. That makes the S20 FE the first really high-profile phone produced directly in response to the economic pressures of the pandemic. Now, that's interesting because Samsung on the stream today also said we're going to be doing this for the future. Whether that, th- whether that is the result of realising this is going to be the case for a long time or it was in the plans and it was just rebadged or something else, I don't know. It's an interesting I was curious one. that the S10 had a fan edition as well then, although like it was commonly known as the light, but lots of people refer yeah. to that as the fan edition. So it's mm. kind of interesting that Samsung said that. Yeah, so it is an interesting one. But um, I think the, the, the sort of the phones the phone arena right now, not to be confused with a brand of the same name, but the phone world right now has got a lot happening and we, we think we're going to get another one from the Google, from the Google right now. The Google is going to come out with <laughs> the Pixel 5. Uh, we've seen some colours, green and black like the chocolate and a 4A 5G with lower prices. Matt, you, I feel like you like the Pixel range. Is that right? Or do you hate it? One of the two. Well, I, I do. I like the idea of the Pixel range. <laughs> I think, I think look, the Pixel 4 came out and was quite a big letdown for a lot of people, I think. I think the battery was probably one of the major things that let it down. People weren't even making it through a day when that thing first came out. Um, the 4A, I think a lot of people love, right? Again, it kind of comes into that OnePlus Nord sort of price bracket range. Um, and if they're going to... seems like they're going to bundle 5G into that now as well to really compete with the OnePlus Nord. Um, and yeah, like you say, in a world where there are no secrets anymore... Plenty of retailers of in a world exactly. Plenty of retailers have already leaked these things um, and and their prices as well. So it looks like the four A five G is going to come in roughly five hundred quid. Which Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that exactly the same as the Nord? Uh, no, the Nord is a fair bit cheaper than that. Oh, is it really? Oh well, then I'm chatting. Clearly, Corrected. go for a Nord. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Pixel four A is is kind of a beloved phone, right? And the camera won't blow anybody away but the image processing that google have behind that camera really is phenomenal um and so yeah adding 5g to it seems like a no-brainer price point still seems decent if it is still more expensive than the north thanks for correcting me um but it'll be interesting to see and i think the pixel 5 is still quite a mystery right and it'll be interesting to see what they really go after with the pixel 5 you know will it be bigger will it have a bigger battery let's hope so um but where are the where are they putting their chips on what's important to a phone user nowadays be interesting Sheree, to you, see. Sheree, you've used the the Pixel before, right? You you quite liked it. I'm I'm a f- I'm fond of Pixel phones. Um, I especially love them for the cameras, especially the low light, uh, performance. And I 
and I'm a fan of stock Android, quiet as it's kept. Um, it's just that uh, Google doesn't make pins that go with their phones. And if they did, I would have a hard decision. Well, you've got the Motorola phones with stock Android with styluses, haven't you? Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, like, I... I I was I was big on Motorola back when um they were doing smartwatches back when they were mo- doing the modular thing, and then Lenovo bought it, and then yeah, oh, Google <laughs> bought it, then Lenovo bought it, and then yeah, no, it was fine when Google bought it, and then Lenovo bought it, and it was like, hmm. <laughs> like when when, when Google bought Motorola, it felt, it felt like kind of like that thing you do when you're a bit drunk and you buy something massive and you wake up and ah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and because and it doesn't fit it doesn't fit into your life, you sort of put it in a cupboard somewhere, and then Google's like, "Oh yeah, we got Motorola. We should do something with this." And then I was like, "Can we have it?" Like, "Yeah, fine. Here, have some money." <laughs> yeah, we got what we yeah. want from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Send right. it to Microsoft. <laughs> well, you don't don't ruin a, a possible news blast in a minute, Tom. Because before that, we've got to quickly talk about the Amazon hardware event. Because, I mean, I say because I don't know if the world needs to know about this or it. Either definitely does or it definitely doesn't, because last year the hardware event had about four thousand things, and given this week is already horrendously busy, I don't really want to have another twenty-four launches from a brand, including things like a clock. The Amazon clock was just literally a clock that did LED light up. It had a smart ring, it had glasses, and all these things. Not only do you have to cover them each individually in a massive way, they don't. Nothing happens. Like we're not wearing Amazon glasses. No one's got an Amazon ring. Like, what's going on? I'm calling it. This is the year they bring back the Amazon Fire phone. It's happening. We need it. Empirically, the worst phone we've ever reviewed on Tech Radar. So. <laughs> well, there aren't enough phone launches coming up, so I'd be really excited for them. Exactly. To exactly. You you haven't got enough work on Tom as it is, so we just need no. to give you more. Another phone review would be perfect. I feel, but <laughs> these these events though, we 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 almost certain to see you know refreshed Echoes, Echo Studios, Echo Dots, you know Fire Sticks. There'll be more of that stuff, which it'll would obviously be big during the holiday season coming up. But it's it's usually Amazon sticking Alexa into things, which I swear to God is just them walking around a house going that and that and that. <laughs> and like... I find it quite fun, though. It's like they went to one of those machines where you put in a penny, turn it, and you get a toy out. And they do that a few times, then put Alexa in everything that comes out, and there's a whole <laughs> new range of products. It's great fun. So I'm going to look now, and there's going to be an Alexa... There's going to be an Alexa toy stuffed frog. There's going to be an Alexa candle. There's going to be an Alexa cat bed. There's going to be an Alexa cup, an Alexa water bottle, and an Alexa extension pack, like for extension lead for for your uh, plugs, which, as I think about it, will be quite useful. <laughs> for those of you who aren't watching, because this is not a video podcast, Gareth just looked around his room. Yeah, and just that's what I'm saying. I was just saying. <laughs> and like one of those is actually a good idea. So, And with everybody working from home now, Alexa or Amazon employees can do that even easier. They can just look around their room and go, put Alexa in that. So well, why they should, not? They should. They should already be Alexa enabled the things. Tom's looking around his room right now and struggling. Yeah, looking for anything <laughs> interesting. I'm, I'm trying to work out if things I own already have Alexa equivalents. That's the thing. So there's so many now. But is there a scales with Alexa in it already? Surely. There must be, right? You have scales in, you have scales in your bedroom. Well, yeah, they're the Fitbit Aria ones from when I tested them once and it gave me some bad news. So I pledge never to test them again. <laughs> uh, Cherie, are you going to be covering this event on Laptop Mag? Uh, we'll see. Trying to get into it now. But uh, I will quickly say that Best of Worst laptop brands went live and we have a new king. And that king is Asus. Uh, they dethroned HP who dropped into third and uh, Dell slid into second place with MSI rounding fourth place. So a lot of uh, significant jumps. Uh, Asus took the first spot because they they just killed it with innovative design, uh, just innovation period with dual screens and ergo hinge lifts and uh, air, the AAS system, which is their aerodynamic systems for gaming laptops. They have a wide range of laptops. They've even gone into business laptops at this point. And um, they they don't charge an arm, a leg, and the soul of a firstborn for most of their laptops. So it's for these reasons um, that they are the best brand this year for 2020. So congratulations to Asus. And the question that everyone will ask, who's the worst brand? <laughs> uh, read, the, read the article. 
<laughs> so no, my first question was, what's the financial value of a soul of a firstborn? Like, if you don't have one of them, how much is a conversion rate? <laughs> that I've never thought about. I mean, every brand has their strengths and weaknesses, and basically, what best and worst does is we compile those. So we take um a tw- we over a twelve month period, we examine, we go back and look at all the laptops that we reviewed from each of the brands. Um, previously, we've done tech support showdown where we go undercover and te- test all of their tech support, and um, we throw those scores in there with their review scores, design, innovation value in selection and um there's one i always forget there's five of it's a it's a five tier system warranty is what i'm forgetting warranty um and we uh give them score we compile everything look at that and give them scores and you know keep in mind that we didn't get uh, the volume of laptops that we would have gotten this year has been severely impacted due to the pandemic. So like it, like, it, you know, some brands might've done worse than usual. Um, but throughout that Asus just came through with dual screens and weird hinges and heating and cooling systems and screen. Like it, they, they really went above and beyond and yeah, they, they deserved that win. So there it is. It's on one laptop. What, te- what laptop do you like the most? Um, well, I like the only one I've got, this Dell um, laptop. <laughs> <laughs> that's the extent. Um, that's, just, that's, got, that's bad teching, Tom. Bad teching. It's got a screen and like these buttons, little squiggles on them. The way you just described the keyboard, it helps to explain a lot about your copy now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> these buttons with these squiggles just press the button and then I press the submit button and the editor gets annoyed about something, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so let's go into, I don't know, everyone's favourite section. Some people's favourite section, nobody's. It's the news blast. If, for people who haven't listened to this, including Tom, who may not have understood the, the game that we're about to play, um, obviously we have good long chats about the key events of the week, but we often miss out some of the smaller things that people might want to know about. So, I'm going to give a member of the, the team over the week, of which case Matt is one, 60 seconds to talk about as many things as they can in the world of tech. And they have to, first of all, give us the headline and explain what it is as fast as they can within that 60 seconds. How many can you get through? The target is 11. Matt has been very bolshy about the fact that he can do, he can set a new record. Is he going to do it today? Now, remember the rules, of course. You cannot read out and have a script ready to go, and we can tell, and I will call you out. Each each story has to be completely explained to a degree where it's understandable. It can be a line, it can be a couple of lines, but it has to give the gist of the story. That's the only rules. Right, are you ready? I'm ready. On your marks, get set, and go. The LG Wing is out in the wild. Our reviewer, David Lum, has spent 72 hours with it and he says that it's cool, a nifty little device, but until the software catches up with the hardware, it's still just a gimmick, but please do go read more on techradar.com. The iPhone 12 leaks are abundant. Some tips to contact Apple Insider and let them know that October 13th will be the reveal date, October 16th will be the release date, and we reckon those dates line up pretty well with what we're thinking. Minecraft games could soon support 1,000 plus players and we're also getting a free update for PlayStation so that it'll incorporate PlayStation VR, very cool indeed. Uh, Microsoft threw out another Windows 10 update and it started slowing down PCs loads, so they just killed it. Great stuff. Uh, Hands on, uh, yeah, so our uh, fitness editor Catalyst went hands on with the Fitbit Sense. Uh, It's a $300 smartwatch uh, that tracks your stress and mood, and it's great. Uh, Microsoft has bought Bethesda Studios, which means that Fallout games and Elder Scrolls games will all be day one on Xbox Game Pass. Incredible stuff. They could also be co- uh, console exclusive there. How interested would that be? Uh, Time. One division. No. Time. Matt, I was genuinely worried this week because I thought he is a competitor. This man know this man knows the game. He's been preparing for it. I've got six. I went. I went too in depth. I went. Yeah. Too in depth. Yeah. I, I once he like that's the second one. I knew. I was like, I ain't not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you ought to be hitting one every three to four seconds, Matt. You can't, be doing, you can't be doing 15 seconds on the first story. But where so do you gonna... draw the line? You know, you've got to provide the people value, but also let them know the headline. It's That's a difficult game. game. It's a difficult it's game. Difficult. It is a difficult game, but you played very well. So Thank you. I'm, Thank I'm you. much more magnanimous when I'm not losing my title. Uh, that's the that's <laughs> fact. Uh, right, Cherie, lead us into the final section. 
Unpopular opinions. Let your hate unfurl. Let it unfurl. Laptops, tablets, smartphones, and be big box retailers. Unpopular opinions. Well, we I think we've done enough hating on the Xbox Series N- X. Never enough hate. Okay. Uh, well, we're not going to cover it again, but we have a variety of things to talk about, and I'm going to pull in Tom because I like I like the cut of your your thinking, cut of your jib thinking. <laughs> Is that in general or for this unpopular opinion? This unpopular opinion, but also generally, you know. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so when you said there's a variety of opinions, uh, they all are about Apple, and mine is two. My one is the Apple Watch SE. I was about to say FE. The Apple Watch SE should have been a fitness tracker. Um, my my thinking for that is that I just don't really get the Apple Watch SE. Like, it's meant to be a budget uh, smartwatch, a budget Apple Watch, but it's still pretty expensive mm-hmm. and it's undercut by the Apple Watch 3. So anyone that wants, like, an affordable Apple Watch is just going to buy that one. And I feel like it would have made a lot more sense for Apple to make a proper small fitness tracker, fitness band, in the same vein as like the Huawei watch as in the Garmin Vivo Smart, the Fitbit Inspire, that kind of thing, like with a really small watch, one that doesn't have loads of features on there and just like tracks your fitness, but it ties into your phone. Um, I feel like there's going to be a much bigger market for kind of people that don't want all the features on your wrist, but still want to kind of get the fitness thing um, compared to just a different Apple Watch. As I said, I don't really get the Apple Watch SE. And there are rumours that Apple is working on a fitness tracker, so it's not like it doesn't consider this at all. I, I, I like this opinion because I wanted to give a completely contrary thought on it. Uh, number one, I think Fitness Plus is coming. You know, this is Apple's big thing, and you need an Apple Watch to make it work properly. Um, a fitness tracker would fit really nicely with that. You know, if you want to get involved with the fitness side of things and nothing else, which a lot of people do, uh, then that would make a lot of sense. But I think Apple's clearly going to want to launch Fitness Plus first, get it embedded, and then go, hey, this thing that everyone's been using definitely loads of people we've now got you a really easy way to get involved in that that's separate now i've been using both as you can see on camera the apple watch 6 and the apple watch se on separate wrists for four days in a row and the se is way better quite honestly um because it's like the apple watch 4.5 and it, it, it i think it's the sweet spot of apple watches i can't work out whether i really care about the always on display it annoys me more than anything else because like you know yeah, you can turn off the display into theatre mode and stuff. It's quite annoying to have to turn that on and off. And if you're in any kind of low light situation, it's just blindingly... Uh, Siri's listening to this right now. That's worrying me. Um, <laughs> it's just turned itself on. It's like, I'm listening. Um, but if you're in any kind of low light situation, you know, twilight or where your watch can be seen, it's really bright still, even though it's on sort of dim mode. Um, so having that turned off, I don't mind so much. Um, but the Apple Watch SE, it's got the S5 chipset inside, so the battery life is actually really good. Lasts at least 20% longer than the Apple Watch 6. It doesn't have the blood oxygen sensors and the EKG, but I don't know if that's really necessary for mainstream. But it does have, the Series 3 doesn't, that larger display. And I think that's actually quite a big deal to have those extra pixels all around when you're looking at a watch. Um, so for me, it kind of hits the sweet spot. I don't really think the Watch 6 is needed. It's way too expensive. Get an SE. And you're in a really good space, I feel, because it's it's got nearly everything that you need. I'll jump onto Tom's side of the fence here. I was equally confused by it, Tom. Uh, yeah, I think it's too expensive. And, and, you know, it's interesting in the live stream when they announced it, they were very much hinting at the fact that this is kind of the Apple Watch for kids. Like, they showed a lot of kids wearing it. They then went on to talk about their family plan and this idea that if your kids had Apple Watches, they wouldn't necessarily need iPhones and you could keep track of them and keep track of their fitness and stuff like that. But it's far too expensive to give it to a kid. So so what are they trying to do? I, I just think I think the messaging is a little bit mixed up on it and I don't necessarily know who the Apple Watch SE is for. Um, because if you're really into it and you're really into your fitness and you know you're going to be getting Fitness Plus and all these things, surely you're going to be looking at the Watch 6. But why? And if you're not, but why? Because because you're going to be really into it and you're going to want to know what your oxygen levels are or whatever the other fitness features are. It's not even, the, the oxygen level is not even medically sound. You know, you can't, Apple's basically saying you can't trust this in a medical sense. It's just there for your information, um, for your own wellness. But it's like, well, if it's not a medical device and it means that it could, it's not always going to be reliable. I mean, in testing, it's nearly always is. There was a couple of weird ones, but there was one that wasn't so good. A one sort of reading that wasn't so good. But I mean, that gave me less less of a kind of a trust in it. I don't really want that. I want to feel like this is a great thing. And especially, you know, people right now with the sort of respiratory disease kicking around, people are going to want to feel confident in it. I just know it, Apple kind of downplayed its importance while making it a headline feature. 
So and I thought, well, then in which case, do I really need this? You know, do I really need an ECG? Um, in which case, no. Give me the old watch, which has the always on display lost, which is the only real thing I could say it hasn't got. But I'm not even sure if I want that. So yeah, and then that comes back to it, right? This like confusing message, right? Like you say, who is the who is the Apple Watch Six for? Then is probably be a better question than who is the Apple Watch SE for? Because it seems like the Apple Watch SE is for everyone. Go out and enjoy it. But then Tom Tom wrote a good piece at the weekend about the iPad Pro and the iPad Air being being confusing as well. You know, who's the iPad Pro mm. for? You know, you could argue nobody because it's so powerful, but loads of people are still buying it. And, you know, Tom made a point that the iPad Air has superseded it and made it a much, that's a much more appealing buy. And it's basically the same thing with the watches. I know who the iPad Pro is for. Cherie, she loves the tablet. Why are you like this? You know, <laughs> like you, you know, you just come. I'm come. I'm sitting here, letting y'all voice y'all opinions, and here you come, sending for me, coming for me, and I did not send. You know, I hate <laughs> tablets. You know, I do not believe in them. Um, I, but I, I don't understand who the. Air, I don't understand. Like, I guess in the grand scheme of things, you need the air because the pro is so expensive. Um. But once you start doing middle ground tablets, I just don't get, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't get it and I don't like it. <laughs> Tom, what do you think? I don't think the iPad Air is a middle ground tablet anymore. I think for all intents and purposes, we might as well just consider it Apple's top tier one because it's got everything the iPad Pro does except loads of the price. So we can ignore that Pro exists now, throw it into a volcano until they bring out a new one next year. I mean, it does have a lot more power in the Pro, though, and bigger screen size. The, the Air has more power, you mean? No, the, the iPad the iPad Pro has more power. Oh, they made it sound like the Air had more power because it's got their newer chipset, hasn't yeah, it? Which, the which A14. I, th- I think is an educational thing, but the because it's the A12Z, it has a better... It's got basically graf- better graphical processing on the iPad Pro, in which case... Yeah, no one needs that. But I think people that are the, are the tr- proper end of things, the creatives, they might need that. No, like I, I do creative stuff on my tablet all the time and I don't need processing. I just need an S Pen, a big, uh, not an S Pen, an Apple Pencil, a big <laughs> screen. I don't think I've ever done anything on this tablet more intensive than playing Fortnite. Well, then there you go. I don't, I wish I hadn't just said that <laughs> on the podcast. But you did um, and now you can't take it back. <laughs> I do cool people stuff. I, um... don't, don't feel bad. I still play Pokemon Go. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I still play retro, retro games on on the all the time, and I'm only playing Tony Hawk's on my PlayStation because it's an old game. So we all have a bit of retro once in a while, right? I think we've hit our time. Uh, we've done a very good podcast. Uh, have you had a lovely time, Tom? Of course, I've had a lovely time. Thank you for hosting me. And how can people get in contact with you if they want to give you thoughts on what you've said? Thomas.bedford at futurenet.com. That's the way to do it. You can get in contact that way. Professional. Yeah, uh, Matt. How about you? Uh, you can follow me on all the social medias at Matt P Video, but mostly just go to like Tech Radar on YouTube and subscribe and on Facebook and watch all of our lovely videos because we've been doing many, many lovely videos lately and they're all great. Cherie, tell us about yourself. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Miss Smith 11. That is M I S S Smith 11. And of course, go to Laptop Mac, check out Best and Worst Brands, Laptop Before, Laptop Now, Laptop Forever. Um, and also send us your pitches because we want to get more of you in the site. Paid, of course. So please, please, please hit up our How to Pitch page. Uh, usually I would be, do a competing notice and say Tech Radar is amazing, which of course it is. Um, but I would also urge you to check out the best and worst brands. Cherie and her team do a lot, a lot of work to make sure they get the best and most definitive ranking. And it's very interesting this year. Like I said, you can check out who's at the bottom. It's slightly unexpected, I would say. Definitely worth looking at. Um, I'm Gareth Beavis, Global Editor-in-Chief of Tech Radar, as we've already mentioned. You can hit me at Super Beave. Uh, please also do subscribe to our newsletter. We have the Week in Review on Tech Radar. You can find that on the site very easily please subscribe that comes from me every week i try really hard at that and i want people to read it so please do that um and obviously this has been the noise cancelling podcast if you like this spotify is a way to subscribe apple podcast is a way to subscribe and give us a rating acast deezer wherever you get your pods please just subscribe and listen to us every week we will be lovely we'll be lovely in your ears is what i was about to say we will be lovely in your ears uh (laughs) thank you very much and we will speak to you all next week bye bye Bye. Bye.